Hey everybody, before we get into this video, I just wanted to remind everyone that we are going to be working with lethal voltages here. Do not attempt to build something like this if you're not qualified to do so, and always take the necessary safety precautions. Hey everybody, welcome back to the workshop. This is part five of our tube preamp pedal build. Now at the end of the last video, I wired up the input board with our boost stage and I built the power supply, but I was trying to figure out how I was gonna get the power supply mounted in the chassis because I really didn't wanna have a bunch of screws showing on the outside. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I've been trying to avoid all along. I did come up with a solution for that. What I've done is I've put some quarter-inch uh, nylon standoffs on the back of this power supply board. These fuse holders have a little sunken area where the head of a screw would sit. And what I've done is instead of putting the screw in from this side, I'm going to go from the back. And so I've got a nut. There's a nut that is seated in that fuse holder. I pressed the nut in as much as I could and then drove a screw in from the back side, tightened it down, and then heated this up so that it melted the plastic enough for it to sink in a little bit more. So this, this nut is now securely in the fuse holder, and now I can drive a screw in from the back side, so I only have one screw showing on the outside of the chassis. Not the way I would have preferred for things to go, but it works, and it's not going to look terrible. I've also got the input board mounted here, and so that's where the input and output jacks are going to be. So now that we've got that worked out, we're ready to install the power supply board and start making some connections. The first thing we're going to do is connect the secondary from the transformer to the power supply board, and we're going to wire up the primary of the transformer to our switch and fuse. After that, we can wire up the filaments on the tube sockets.
Hey guys, I just wanted to stop for a minute and address something that I noticed. When I work on these prototypes, I kind of get in a different mindset where I want all the connections to be really easy to undo later. Because in my experience, when you finally get something like this put together, that's just the beginning, I always end up going back in and swapping out components and trying to squeeze out the you know every last bit of tone that I can out of these circuits. So you may have noticed when I was wiring up the fuse connections there that I just kind of laid the wire in there and soldered it in place rather than wrapping the end of the wire. You really need a good solid mechanical connection and then you put the solder on. So I just wanted to point that out. This is not how you should be doing things and from here on out I'm going to try and remember not just, you know, to get out of prototyping mode and build this the way that I would actually build a finished product.
All right, I've wired up all the filaments. One thing I didn't anticipate was how close these turret strips were going to be to these uh, filament wires. Because this base plate is riveted in place now, I can't go back and just put longer screws in here to raise these turret strips up. So I really hope that doesn't cause any issues. Now you saw the gray and red twisted pair that was that I connected to the last tube filament. That's going back to the power supply board where it's going to be rectified and regulated with the zener down to 5.1 volts and then I'll have another wire coming back over to our relay board. So we'll make that connection and then we can make all of our high voltage connections to the turret strip. Okay, so we've got all of our high voltage connections done in here, and uh, now what I'm going to do is cross my fingers and uh, bring up the voltage slowly on the Variac. We don't have any tubes installed here, so I'll probably do the same thing again once our tubes are in here, just to make sure we don't have any faults on the filament winding. Hope nothing blows up. Oh, I didn't turn the power on. Okay, so at 48 volts, um, I don't see any signs of, uh, you know, short circuits. Uh, neither of the fuse is blue, so we'll turn it up a little bit. And we're somewhere around 70 volts right now. I'm going to leave it right there for a minute or so. All right, turning the voltage up, about 90 volts. And we'll leave it there for a minute again. And here we go, all the way up. All the way up to 120. I don't hear any crackling. I don't hear any popping. I don't see any smoke. I think I might have done something right here. Okay, I've had it at 120 for a minute or so, and I, I, I still don't see any signs of trouble. 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and measure these voltages and see what we've got. First power supply node, holy cow. First power supply node has given me 382 volts, which is way higher than I expected to see here. I thought it was going to be down around 300, but it's there are no tubes in there, so you know that'll drop a little bit once I put some tubes in. Second power supply node has given me three, 300, wow, 379 volts. I've barely dropped at all, but I've only got a 1K resistor in there, so I might go back in and, uh, and change that later. I don't know. We'll see. Third power supply node. we got 361 and a half volts there. So this is good. This is the part of the build that I always get nervous about. Because if you, <laughs> you know, you make one wrong connection and sometimes you blow up the whole thing. And I've done that before. It darn near set my uh, my workbench on fire. I mean, it, it, it immediately just burst into flame and um, it was not fun. I'm really happy that uh, I'm seeing some good high voltages here. This is very good. It means I did something right. Alright, we've successfully installed the power supply. Nobody died. I didn't burn any buildings down, so I'm feeling pretty good about this right now. Uh, that is it for today's video. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. And if you could, do me a favor and post a comment or two. Like it if you like it. Hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.